Before Postal was an open world FPS game where the player could cause absolute carnage and mayhem, Postal was an isometric shooter where the player could cause absolute carnage and mayhem. Postal, and by extension its developer, Running With Scissors, started from humble beginnings. Before Running With Scissors made Postal and made a controversial splash on the gaming scene, they got their start developing games intended for kids. That might sound unbelievable and shocking in retrospect, but to be fair, id Software made Commander Keen before Doom or Quake. On a personal note, I love Running With Scissors. I love their games, I love what they stand for, and I love how friendly and responsive they are to their fanbase. Although they make edgy, violent games filled with dark humour, Running With Scissors always supports the players, first and foremost. Dude, when I was like 16, I had to write a research paper and the topic I chose was violent video games. At the time, I had been playing Postal 2 and other first person shooters of its era, so I decided to contact Running With Scissors for an interview. I never thought they would respond to a fucking high school kid, but they gave me the time of day, and I am eternally grateful. I highly doubt they remember that interview, and that research paper is long gone anyway, I can't find it anywhere, but that's a personal anecdote about how they impacted my life positively. So yeah, Running With Scissors is a great company, and Postal 2 is outrageously fun, but how does the first Postal game stack up? Well, to put it simply, it's a good game. Yes, it's an isometric shooter, but the overall gameplay is still enjoyable, and that's the main intention of Postal 1. As I said before, the original Postal caused quite a stir when it was released. Apparently the idea of murdering every person around you inside a video game didn't tickle everyone's fancy back in the late 90s. Some retail chains refused to sell the game outright, the United States Postal Service tried to counterfile the Postal name after Running With Scissors filed a trademark on it, and the game was also attacked by Senator Joe Lieberman. I mean, Jesus Christ, this game couldn't catch a fucking break. Although Postal Postal does have that 90s edge to it like everyone and their mother has said already, the game's intention was to be fun. When questioned about Postal Redux and if it would provide more gore and violence than the original, Vince Desi, CEO of Running With Scissors replied with, It's never really been a gore thing with me. I've always seen the original Postal as a simple shoot 'em up blast your ass off fast paced game. I think that Vince is totally correct here. It is mostly about the action and especially in Redux, the game feels way more fast paced. So I played the original game, the special delivery add-on and the super postal bonus levels and then I also played all the way through Postal Redux and it was all enjoyable. It is kind of hard to break down what makes Postal fun to play, just because it is so simplistic. There are a number of hostels in every level, and obviously it's your job to kill them. Now what I like is that you don't have to kill every single enemy on screen, as you only have to take care of a certain percentage. This is a useful feature, because it lightens the load a bit, and you also don't have to walk around the entire level just to look for one or two guys. Having a kill percentage was the best way to go, and I'm glad that they kept this in Postal Redux. When you clear out a level, you have to press F1 for some reason in the original game to move on. Now that is fucking weird, and it's a very outdated game mechanic, but once you get used to it, pressing F1 isn't really a big deal. Along with the hostiles, there are random civilians that scream and run away from you, and if you want, they can all be gunned down. These people add to the realism of each map, and speaking of which, each of the levels take place in realistic environments. Running with scissors based a lot of the places you visit in the game offer unique locales and architecture found in Arizona. According to Vince, the mine, the ostrich farm, and the air force base are all levels that are directly inspired by southern Arizona, which is great. I love how they sprinkle in their own style to rather mundane locations in Postal 1. The game starts up with eerie music and this creepy diary entry. As you can see, the background art for these intermission screens are fucking twisted, and to be honest, they contrast with the actual gameplay, which is tame by comparison, 
especially for today's standards. I mean sure, the executions that you can perform are kinda morbid, but that's where it ends on the gameplay side of things. Also, come on, the weak machine gun sound effect that plays during the execution ruins any sort of tension. The executions themselves have no practical in-game purpose aside from sick pleasure, which is a bit silly to me. I at least figured it should have given back some health or something, but maybe I've been playing too much Doom Eternal. Most of the time, the civilians that you come across are killed by getting in the crossfire between yourself and the police, and you don't actively seek them out. Except for the marching band, of course, that even return in Postal 2. The first level is set outside of a Postal dude's home, and one thing you'll notice is the hand-drawn look of the level backdrops coupled with the 3D models. I love how each level almost looks like it could be a painting, and this makes the art style hold up. The characters in the world are very much a product of their time and look goofy by today's standards, but it's a game about shooting everyone in sight. The premise is ridiculous to begin with. The postal dude is voiced by the legendary Rick Hunter. Although the character wasn't fully realised until Postal 2 and he didn't have much material to work with in this game, Rick Hunter still did a great job and provided some funny one-liners. Anyway, the postal dude is armed with a machine gun initially, but by the end of the first level, you will obtain the shotgun and a couple of different grenade types. Switching between each weapon is kind of a bitch, since you can't just use the mouse wheel and you're forced to bind the next and previous weapon controls to the keyboard instead. The throwable weapons can't be selected alongside your gun as well, and that takes a bit to get used to. But that being said, I can't be that mad considering that running with scissors patched in better mouse aiming 20 years after the game was fucking released, and that said game is free to download on Steam. Postal Redux addresses all of my tiny, bitchy complaints with the original anyway, but we'll get to that version soon enough. Regardless, the machine gun is the best weapon in the game. Yeah, there are other weapons that are more powerful, like the rocket launcher or the flamethrower, but the versatility and range of the standard machine gun can't be matched. You can shoot enemies at any distance with this gun, and that alone makes it the workhorse weapon of the entire campaign. With the shotgun, it probably inflicts more damage than the machine gun, but it has a limited range of attack, and you can't move and fire at the same time. It's best used for close quarters combat when a small group of enemies are pursuing you. While the weapons in Postal are kinda situational, you can pretty much use any gun you want and be okay, which adds to the fun factor that Vince has talked about. This game wants you to experiment with its arsenal and just use whatever gun you want. The drawbacks that some of the guns have are not so severe that they become useless, which is nice. Right off the bat, you will notice that there's a good variety of enemies, as hostiles are equipped with shotguns, assault rifles, grenades, and the most dangerous weapon of all, the rocket launcher. The rocket launcher guys can stun lock the player and kill them in a matter of seconds, and they appear in level 1. Since the enemies you're going up against are just police and military soldiers, the developers did a good job at making them stand out from one another. As you're progressing through the game, you will probably notice that there's no music, which I have mixed feelings on. When you're in the middle of going postal, slaughtering everyone you see, the lack of music isn't really noticeable, and the ambient noises are effective enough on their own. It actually makes the game a little creepier, and it adds to the weirdness of Postal 1. <laughs> However, when you're just walking from one side of a level to another with nobody in your way, the silence becomes deafening. At least you can just hit F1 to end a level. But I'm also talking about the moments when you're seeking those last couple of kills before you hit the percentage quota. Back to the levels themselves, the Parade of Disasters is one of the best maps in the game, as it introduces the marching band as I've said. This is a reoccurring group in the Postal games, and just like in Postal 2, you can murder them in any way you like. The bridge is played from a top-down perspective, as opposed to isometric for some reason, and it's the same thing with the train station and also the penultimate level of the game, the industrial complex. I prefer the classic isometric angle, but the top-down view 
only shows up like three times in the entire campaign, so it's not worth complaining about. Just like in Super Contra, it helps break up the gameplay I guess. I like the real world locations you visit throughout the game, and it's way more visually interesting than the typical military based setting that was rampant around this time in shooters. The farm is one of the more unique levels, since ostrich farms aren't really something that you find too often in real life compared to regular farms of course. The final level of the game takes you to an air force base, and while the difficulty ramps up with the constant respawning military soldiers, it's nothing that makes you want to rip your fucking hair out. I do like that once you get into the swing of things, Postal is more about being entertaining than being a hard challenge or anything. There is a challenge mode that you can access if you want, but I think the regular campaign is more fun. The original ending for Postal was deemed controversial at the time, and uh, yeah, you can kinda see why. You don't have any control of this section by the way, as it's just a cutscene, where the Postal dude fantasizes about shooting up a school. Postal Redux change the ending to the Postal Dude watching his own funeral take place, which is disturbing in its own way. Also, the end of Postal Redux acts like a regular level by giving the control back to the player. A closing cinematic plays, showing the Postal Dude in a padded cell, while a psychologist evaluates his mental states. The psychologist concludes his report by saying that the common issues that life throws at you can sometimes cause individuals to snap and go postal. Population pressure and the stress of modern life will cause an increase in violent tendencies. The urban environment is the incubator for all sorts of undesirable behaviors. However much his atrocities disgust us, he may actually consider himself a hero. This little sequence with the psychologist is fantastic, and it gives players an eerie, lasting impression. I love the voice of a psychologist in the original game and in Postal Redux, where they used Corey Cruz for the latter. It is tortured mind to make sure that he's battling against impossible odds. It is not unusual for such individuals to believe that the entire fate of the world rests with them. In the end, our subject has displayed all the classic symptoms of paranoid delusions. We may never know exactly what set him off, but rest assured, we will have plenty of time to study him. The first Postal was a simple yet effective shooter for its time, and while it might have not been the most mechanically complex game, it did achieve what it set out to do. Be a little bit edgy, cause some chaos, but ultimately still be a fun game. Two months after the release of Postal, Running With Scissors put out the special delivery expansion for the game. This small expansion adds four brand new levels, and they appear to be more novel than the original maps. In the Easy Mart level, the Postal dude breaks the fourth wall and comments on how the shopping center doesn't sell any copies of the game. What? You don't sell Postal? There's also a no running with scissors sign for good measure. This level is pretty indicative of the tone of the Postal games going forward, with more of an emphasis on dark comedy, which was only sprinkled into the original game. Shantytown and Earthquake are the next two levels of the expansion, and they both look like they could have easily blended in with the base campaign. I like the detail that's on display in Earthquake specifically, with the destroyed buildings, the rubble, the debris, and the cars that have been totaled. La Palomino Resort returns to the more comical leanings of the first level, as you're gunning down naked elderly people with cheery vacation music playing in the background. I appreciate that now on the Steam version of Postal, you can play the entire game with these special delivery levels packed in as one big campaign, along with the Super Postal levels. Super Postal is the Japanese version of Postal 1, and it contains two exclusive levels set in Japan. Now I was wondering why they would create new levels specifically for the Japanese version of the game. Well according to co-owner of Running With Scissors Mike Jarrett, they had a partner over in Japan and he paid to have the levels done specifically for the Japanese 
Japanese version of Postal. Tokyo is the first of these exclusive levels, and it's pretty hard because of the high enemy count and how they all take pot shots at you. Osaka is less memorable out of the two Japanese levels, but still, having Super Postal available in the game, now thanks to Steam updates, as well as Postal Redux, is a cool novelty. The original Postal is available on Steam for free, but I'd still recommend getting Postal Redux instead. Postal Redux is the best way to play the original Postal, bar none. You can even get a Steam key on the Running With Scissors website for like $2, rather than buying the game on the Steam store. Postal Redux updates the visuals, the audio, the controls, and even the gameplay to a small degree, and it's brilliant. So many little things have been added and changed to enhance the original game, and for the low price point, it's completely worth it. The game was remade from the ground up on the Unreal Engine, with updated 3D models and artwork, and better sound effects. The machine gun actually sounds like a weapon now, and it doesn't feel like you're just peppering the enemies with it. Speaking of a weapon roster, there is a new revolver that kills almost everyone in one hit, and it's very satisfying to use. The ammo for it is limited though, so it's best to save it for desperate situations. The machine gun isn't going to be the workhorse weapon like how it was in the original, because its range has been reduced. This is a welcome change to be honest, as it balances the game out. And also the shotgun got a buff since now you can move around while firing. The grenade types can now be selected separately from the actual guns, which is a much needed update. It makes the game a little more fast paced this way, since you don't have to stop and cycle through the grenades as well to get back to the weapon you want to equip. The executions are still only a novelty, but they added new execution animations for whatever weapon you're holding. In the original game, even if you had the shotgun or rocket launcher equipped, the execution animation would always default to the machine gun. So more animations is a nice little inclusion, and it incentivizes players to actually try out the executions. The crosshair displays enemy health in Redux, and while that is quite a small addition, I couldn't imagine the game without it at this point. Instead of pressing Pressing F1 like in the original, the levels have actual exits this time around, and it feels like each level is more connected as a result, which was an aspect that was kinda lacking in Postal 1. While we're on the subject of level transitions, there are some instances in Redux where levels would start in completely different spots than in the original game. After you finish the mine and go to the junkyard, the level begins in front of the entrance instead of outside the mine, which was weird. In Postal Redux, this is fixed to where after the mine, you spawn in outside of a mine in the junkyard level. That's most of the little details out the way, so let's move on to the bigger features. Postal Redux adds a brand new carnival level, and I'm sold due to the blood reference it makes. I want Jojo! I want Jojo! 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 The developers also added a carnage mode into Redux, and it essentially turns the game into an arcade experience, complete with action-packed music, a scoring system with multipliers, and even a unique ending when you beat the mode. I prefer the regular campaign, but for players who want more of a frantic experience with Postal Redux, there you go. Postal Redux is a near-perfect remake, and I can't recommend it enough. The only thing that I can nitpick about is how it doesn't feature the level select option like the original, but that's all I really have to bitch about. Please go buy Postal Redux. It's super cheap, and there's plenty of content to keep you entertained compared to the price they're charging. Postal isn't a bad game by a long shot, and although Postal 2 eclipsed it and took the franchise in a completely new direction, there is still some enjoyment to be had with the original. Even though we probably won't see another isometric Postal game again, I'm still all for running with scissors experimenting with the Postal formula, and I'm glad that this is happening with Postal Brain Damage. The future of a Postal series is bright, and it all stemmed from that 90s edge.